live from San Jose, it's theCUBE. Presenting Big Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Big Data SV, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. You know, this is our 10th Big Data event. When we first started covering Big Data, back in 2010, it was Hadoop, and everything was a batch job. About four or five years ago, everybody started talking about real time and the ability to affect outcomes before you lose the customer. Louis Canachero is here, he's the CEO of uh, Streamlio, and he's joined by Karthik Ramasamy, who's the Chief Product Officer. They're both co-founders. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. My first question is, why did you start this company? Sure, we came together around a vision that enterprises need to access the value around fast data. And so as you mentioned, uh, enterprises are moving out of the slow data era and looking for a fast data uh, value to their data, um, to, to really deliver that back to their users or their use cases. And so coming together around that idea of real-time action, uh, what we did was we realized that enterprises can't all um, access this data with projects right now that are not meant to work together, that are very difficult perhaps to, to stitch together. So what we did was create an intelligent platform for fast data that's really accessible to enterprises of all sizes. What we do is we unify uh, the core components to access fast data, which is messaging, compute and stream storage, accessing the best of breed open source technology that's really open source out of Twitter and Yahoo. So Karthik, I was going to ask, well, why does the world need another you know, streaming platform? But Lewis kind of touched on it, it's because it's too hard, it's too complicated. So you guys are trying to simplify all that. Yep, the, the reason mainly we wanted to simplify it because based on our, all our experiences at Twitter and Yahoo, one of the key aspects uh, was to simplify it so that it's consumable by regular enterprise because Twitter and Yahoo kind of uh, organization can afford the talent and the expertise in order to do these uh, real-time platforms. But when it goes to normal enterprises, they have, don't have access to the expertise and the cost benefits that uh, they might have to incur. So because of that, uh, we wanted to use these open source projects, whatever the Twitter and the Yahoo has provided, combine them and make sure that uh, you have a simple, easy drag and drop kind of uh, interface so that it is easily consumable for any enterprise. Essentially what we are trying to do is reduce the barrier for entry to enterprises mm -hmm. for, for real time for all the enterprises. Yeah, enterprises will pay up for, yeah. for a solution, mm -hmm. uh, the companies that you used to work for, they, they'll gladly throw engineering at the problem they, yeah, and, sure. and to, to save time, but mm -hmm. most organizations, they don't have the resources and, and, and so, okay, so how does it, would it work you know, prior to Streamlio? Mm -hmm. Maybe take us through sort of how a company would attack this problem, the complexities of they, what they have to deal with and what life is like with you guys. So, so the current state of the world is essentially uh, it's fragmented solution mm -hmm. today to us, the state of the world is, where you take uh, multiple pieces of different projects and you have to assemble them together in a format so that you can uh, do the end-to-end -end real time analytics or the stream analytics, right? So the reason why people end up doing is each of these big data projects that the people use was designed for completely a different purpose. Like messaging is one and compute is another one and third one is storage one. So essentially what we have done as a company is to simplify this aspect by integrating these well-known best of the breed projects called, uh, for messaging we use something called Apache Pulsar, for compute we use something called Apache Current from Twitter, and similarly for storage, for real-time storage, we use something called uh, Apache Bookkeeper, so and to unify them so that under the hoods it might be three systems, but as a user, when you're using it, it serves as a, or functions as a single system. So you don't, then, so you install the system, and you ingest your data, express your computation, and get the results out in so one single system. So you've unified or converged <laughs> yep. these functions. I, I, if I understand it correctly, we're talking off camera a little bit. Mm. The, the team, Lewis, that you've assembled, actually developed a, a lot of these, the, or c hugely committed to these open source projects. Absolutely, right? co-creators of each of the projects. And what that allows us to do is to really uh, integrate at a deep level each project. For example, Pulsar is actually a pub sub, sub, pub sub system that is built on Bookkeeper. And Bookkeeper, in our minds, is a peerless, best of breed stream storage solution. So fast and durable storage. That storage is also used in Apache Heron to store state. 
And so as you can see, enterprises, rather than stitching together multiple different solutions for queuing, streaming, compute, and storage, now have one option that they can install in a very small cluster. And operationally, it's very simple to scale up. We simply add nodes if you get data spikes. And what this allows is enterprises to access new and exciting use cases that really weren't possible before. For example, machine learning model deployment to real time. So I'm a data scientist and what I found is in data science you spend a lot of time training models in batch mode. It's mm -hmm. a legacy type uh, of, of approach, but once the model is trained, you want to put that model into production in real time so that you can deliver that value back to a user in real time. Um, let's call it under two second SLA. So that has been a, a great use case for Streamlio because we are a ready-made intelligent platform for fast data for ML AI deployment. And the use cases are typically stateful and you're persisting data, is that right? Maybe yes, you use cases, uh, uh, it, it can be used for stateless use cases also, but the key advantage that we bring to the table is stateful storage. And the, since we ship along with the storage, st the realizing stateful storage becomes much easier because uh, of the fact that uh, it can be used to store the real intermediate state of the computation, or it can be used for the staging area of the messaging where the data, when it spills over from uh, whatever the memory is, it's automatically stored to disk, or you can even retain the data for as long as, as you want, so that uh, you can unlock the value later, whenever, uh, mm. after, the data is after the data has been processed for the fast data, you can access the lazy data later in time too. So give us the rundown on the, on the company, funding, you know, VCs, headcount, give us the basics. Sure, we uh, raised Series A from Lightspeed Venture Partners, mm -hmm. uh, led by John Veronis and Sudeep Chakrabarti. Uh, we raised seven and a half million and emerged from Stealth uh, back in August. Uh, that allowed us to ramp up our team to 17 now, mainly engineers, um, in order to really uh, have a very solid product. Um, but we launched post-rev, pre-launch, and some of our uh, customers are really looking at geo-replication uh, across multiple data centers, and so active-active geo-replication is an open source feature in Apache Pulsar, and that's been a huge draw uh, compared to some other solutions that are out there. As you can see, this theme of simplifying architecture is where Streamlio sits, so unifying queuing and streaming allows us to replace a, a number of different legacy systems. So that's been one avenue to help grow. The other, obviously, is on the compute piece, as enterprises are finding new and exciting use cases to deliver back to their users. Uh, the compute piece needs to scale up and down. We also announced Pulsar Functions, which is stream-native compute that allows very simple function uh, computation in native Python and Java, so you spin up an Apache Pulsar cluster or a Streamlio platform, and you simply um, have compute functionality. That allows us to access edge use cases, mm. so IoT is a huge uh, kind of exciting POCs for us right now, where we have connected car examples that uh, don't need a heavyweight scheduler deployment at the edge, it's Pulsar Pulsar functions. What that allows us to do are things like fraud detection, anomaly detection at the edge, model deployment at the edge, interpolation, observability, and alerts. And, and so how do you charge for this? Is it, is it usage based? Sure. Is it, is it what we found is enterprise are more comfortable on a per node basis, simply mm -hmm. because because we uh, have the ambition to really scale up and help enterprises really use Streamlio as their fast data platform across the entire enterprise. Uh, we found that having a per data uh, charge rate actually would limit that, that growth, and so uh, per node uh, and shared architecture. So we took an early um, investment in uh, optimizing around Kubernetes, and so as uh, enterprises are adopting Kubernetes, we are the, the most simple installation on Kubernetes. So on-prem, multi-cloud, at the edge. I love it, so I mean, for years we've just been talking about the complexity headwinds mm -hmm. in this big data space. We certainly saw that with, with Hadoop. You know, Spark was designed to certainly solve some of those problems, but it sounds like you're doing some really good work to, to take that further. Lewis and Kartik, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank really you. appreciate thanks it. For thanks us. for having us, Dave. All right, and thank you for watching. We're here at Big Data SV Live from San Jose. We'll be right back. Thank you.